Hello and welcome everyone to another episode. So, you're like, oh my god, that thing is even more amazing than the other one, oh my god. So yes, I have to say, um, you know, I the only thing I didn't do with this one that I kind of am upset about a little bit is uh, I did not put a landing can up here as the uh, bridge. Uh, I, I, I can get over that a little bit, but once again, I'm still in development of creating really awesome space vehicles and all kinds of just nutty, insane things. You guys have watched my channel, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so this thing was a insane build for me. Uh, it, this wasn't as hard, surprisingly, as the... Uh, Jewel Explorer to build because you know just through the experience and all that other stuff with the Jewel Explorer I figured out how to make a better Interplanetary craft I guess you could say and you know I kind of You know put a lot of my resources forward to want to really You know figure out what is really gonna work compared to uh, my Jewel Explorer which I didn't do a lot of things because I was like, oh, well, I don't need this, and I don't need that, and um, it ended up, as you guys can see, not anywhere near where I wanted to get when I went to Jewel. I'm a little upset with that, but, uh, you know, I felt bad because I shot that thing all the way to Jewel, made you guys watch all these episodes, and it was kind of a dud. Um... You know, this one I'm hoping, you know, I took a lot of precautionary measures uh, to make sure that I can actually get it there. You know, it's got a higher orbit, and I'll explain all that in a minute, but uh, let me cover some of the features and everything else. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering. The Jewel Explorer 10 had somewhere around like 5,200 fuel. I'm not 100% on that one. If you, some of you guys want to check out my last episodes, you can let me know. Or um, when I reconstruct it, because I will be using it again, I shall find out. Uh, yeah, so this one has about 8,500 fuel. Uh, I haven't used any of it at all. Any, I completely stocked this thing up. Uh, you might see it has z xenon gas in it as well. I still have the same four engine configuration but I added eight ion engines and this is going to be somewhat of a testing kind of thing for this because uh, my main idea with putting these engines on there was basically to offset fuel even though it will not offset like a crazy amount but when you have a burn for like 13 minutes or 14 minutes, which is one of the burns you have to do just to get to Jewel, um, you know, with this size of a spacecraft, um, I could see that shaving off a lot of time to, you know, basically get it there. Uh, you know, with uh, the Jewel Explorer as well, this one has eight probes to land and launch and, you know, have all kinds of crazy fun with. And it has two landers, which are a lot different than the Jewel landers. Um, these landers have advanced SAS. They have a um, they have RCS on them, and it has twice the size for a fuel tank. And it, you know, I'm still using this engine because it's basically the the um, the least powerful engine that you can really use on this and not unless if I just wanted to put one of these nuclear engines on it, which would be silly so um, yeah I use that engine a lot on a lot of my designs because it, you don't really need anything other than that especially for a lander uh, you know it's got a lot of fuel tanks uh, there's a lot of stuff on this I, I, it's a lot of trial and error and testing um, a lot of you guys might be concerned with the, uh, like, you know, maneuverability of it. And one thing I will say, and I don't have it, um, SAS on right now, but if you look, I, I'm touching the key right now, and although it turns very slowly, 
uh, it actually has mo more maneuverability than some of the things I've landed in recent and past episodes. Uh, it, it's kind of funny that something like this would have great maneuverability even without um, RCS fuel. And, you know, something that's, like, as simple as, like, a moon hab module or, you know, some of the other things I've landed, it's just, like, you push the button and nothing happens. Uh, now, with these landers and everything else, I'm feeling very comfortable with this thing that I should be able to get to Jewel. Um, you know, I did change the RCS thrusters as well. I, I used the same four configuration, but on my last one, I did not put it on the back end. Uh, and that was kind of a stupid mistake by me. I, I, I honestly think, like, because on the front, it was maneuverable, but on the back, it didn't really do anything at all. So, and, and I also put some, um, of the RCS thrusters, you know, that point in all directions, yeah, the the uh, four directions that I don't have them on for, just because I want to be able to maneuver in any direction, just in case. And this thing can basically turn on a dime. It, it's actually kind of funny, but I can basically spin it around in less than like five or six seconds. It's kind of nutty. So, um, yeah. With the ion thrusters too, just in case if I end up running out of fuel, what I'm end up, end up what I'm going to do is basically uh, you know, get rid of this whole module here, because this is probably the heaviest part of this ship, which is, you know, these, each one of these is 2.5 tons, something like that, so, and, and this one tank here is, I think it's eight, so getting rid of this whole thing would be, like, removing somewhere around, I don't know, 15 tons or something from the ship, so I don't even know how much what the tonnage of the ship is to be honest, but I do say it's very high. Um, now I'm going to do a little test burn for you guys because I did not do that with the last episode. I'm going to quick save it so I'm this won't be, you know, messing up my flight in any kind of way. So I will turn on the um, advanced SAS and. Uh, get it to a hundred percent and I thought I had it on um, time warp but I guess not so we have these main four that turn on on the outside and uh, I don't think I quick saved it hold on let me just make sure I quick saved it because the last thing I want to do is uh, break stuff or ruin it so quick save there we go, and let's turn this thing all the way up. So I I basically use some xenon gas now. Uh, I might have to launch a refueling mission now. Oh, SAS is on. Turn that on. And those are the main four engines and the four ions. And now that's all the engines on. All twelve engines. Now, one thing I will say is, if you look at my orbit, it is a lot different than my last orbit. Uh, I moved it out with, um, when I put the crew on this ship, I basically ended up attaching, and this was like the best idea I ever had, was putting this docking port here. What I would do is come up with my smaller, you know, just my crew modules that I had, you know, the three crew module, the three person crew module, and I dock up, transfer the crew, and then use the the crew module that I brought up here as a tug to push it out. And I, it was only two missions and it got me out to a 600 by 600 orbit. And that will burn considerably less fuel burning from there than burning from, you know, a 100 kilometer orbit or, you know, 150 kilometer orbit or 200, which is what I had it at when I went with the Jewel Explorer. Like, you can even see right now, if I were to go to the moon, and this isn't like my flight plan that I plan on choosing or anything like that, but 
To get to the moon right now would only take 550 meters per second. That's all I would have to achieve compared to if you're like at 100 orbit, it's like 850 or something like that. So, yeah, and what I plan on doing, and I didn't do this with the Jewel Explorer either, is to use the moon as a slingshot to get me out of the system because that will... I won't have to burn as much fuel. That's basically all I have to do is achieve this, which is nothing compared to, um, you know, burning and just heading straight away from the planet, which is a really stupid thing that I did. But you know, I, I kind of learned from you. You gotta learn from your mistakes. So, yeah. Uh, I think I've covered almost everything I possibly could cover, but. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, uh, I, you know, this was four separate launches. You know, there, this was the first launch piece here. Uh, then there was the second here. And the third, which is right here. And then the fourth. So, I did a lot of different things with this as well. I kind of sectioned off a lot of modules. And, uh, you know... Basically, when I launched, I was like, okay, well, I'm only going to need this for this launch, and I'm only going to need this for this launch, and, you know, the one thing I'm going to change as well is to um, maybe make it so that, uh, you know, like, if I rebuild the same one, I'm going to make it so the RCS modules are over here instead of back here, because then what I can do is basically detent and... I don't know, maybe that would work, maybe that wouldn't, but, you know, I could basically detach it and only have this part and then get rid of these back-end pieces, and I'd still be able to use the ion drives, I think. I don't know, I don't think that would work. Yeah, these would be gone, so I'd have to, you know, rework it, maybe put the ion drives up here and put solar panels there or something, you know, whatever. So, I'm going to kill these engines. And yeah, I haven't experienced anything really that um, bad with this thing uh, as far as yet. Um, you know, it still needs a lot of testing, and I'm not going to test it. I'm just going to send it straight to Jewel. There's no point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these guys have a... Um, they're not going to be very happy if they end up somewhere along the lines of... Uh, you know, the Jewel 10. So, this is the Jewel 11, by the way. So, I, I guess I should I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the episode. If I didn't already, I'm sorry. So, anyways, guys. Uh, you know, check out... I'm going to be posting this thing on the Kerbal Space Program forums. Which, I have to say, if you are not a member of... You need to join up as soon as possible because it's a great community, friendly people, and everyone's willing to help you out with any whatever problems you have. And, uh, you know, I, I, you'll see me posting on there and everyone else. And, you know, even Kurt J. Mack is a part of the forums. And there's all kinds of just fun things to do. And, uh... Yeah, I have to say thank you to Mr. Bro J Games for making my background. Um, if any of you guys have noticed, it used to be stars, but now it's planets and stars and all kinds of Kerbal-like things. Yes, thank you, sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, if any of you guys, you know, definitely check out my Facebook and my Twitter. I always post the updates for when I release my videos, so you'll always know when I have a new video out. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.